I'm the Divine Dragon. I'm the Divine Dragon. As for myself, I'm the Divine Dragon. Who are you? Dragon. Alright, so it's no secret at this point that Engage's story has a few things worth critiquing, even for two hours at a time. But to me, there's always been one thing in particular that's bothered me that I haven't seen many people discuss. The fact that, despite exclusively being referred to as the Divine Dragon, Elir never turns into a dragon, not even once. But how is this a missed opportunity? Well, before we get into that, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you like what you see. Having these high effort videos do well helps motivate me to make more of them, and I'm almost at 5,000 subs. Now without further ado, let's get into the video. So it should be obvious by now that I think Alir never turning into a dragon is the biggest missed opportunity in Engage, but why is that? Well, the game's major twist is that Alir is Sombron's daughter, and this adds a lot of drama to the game as Alir's faith in themselves is shaken. Here's the thing though, why does that matter at all? This lineage doesn't negatively impact her in any way physically unless you count the red hair. Oh my god, he's a fell dragon, he has red hair! It also doesn't really matter since her friends immediately accept her despite this revelation, and the drama caused by this reveal is resolved in the same scene where it's revealed by Gris, and Tamara delivers this now popular line. What matters to me isn't how you were born. It's what you do with the life you're given. If you choose to live as a divine dragon, then that's what you are! However, in the next segment of the game, her friends actually do become suspicious of her for a short while, but for different reasons. She becomes a corrupted thanks to Vale for a short while, so her friends fear her in this zombified state. However, many players find this otherwise serious series of events downright comical because Alir dies a few seconds later and is, you guessed it, revived yet again. Here's the thing though, I think the game already has all the pieces it needs to make these scenes actually work as a moment people don't laugh at, and make it actually work much better with the themes of the game, but we should probably touch on the specific theme of the game I'm talking about first. Despite being obsessed with muscles, Alfred is too sickly to ever get any. Despite being from a country that thrives off of war, Diamant wants to make the country peaceful. And despite being from a country that opposes the Divine Dragon, Ivy <gasps> is gay. I love you. Fire Emblem Engage is a game that's about, at least partially, living as who you want to be despite whatever your original circumstances may be. This can also be seen with many side characters. For a pair of examples, Yunaka tries to reinvent herself as a bubbly personality after being unhappy spending her youth as an assassin, and despite being monotone outwardly, Jade's main hobby is writing comedies. Of course, the same can be said for our main protagonist, Alir, who despite being born as a fell dragon, wants to live as a divine dragon. Of course, this falls incredibly flat because, as I mentioned earlier, their origins as a fell dragon don't really impact them during the time the story takes place. I mean, really, what would change about their powers and abilities if they were just born as Lumera's child? Essentially, nothing about Alir is changed by them being Sombron's kid, unlike Alfred who actually has to try to overcome his chronic illness to be who he wants to be. But like I said, the game already has all the pieces it needs to rectify these issues, so how would I rearrange the story to solve these things? Well, for Chapter 20, I would still keep the part where Gris reveals that Alir is Sombron's child. However, Sigurd would not mm. confirm it this time. Alir is left questioning themselves, and their friends are left unsure, but still supportive. You would then proceed to 21, trying to save Vale, still unsure, and the same events would play out, where Alir gets blasted by Sombron, Sombron flies off, and she would be dying in Vale's arms. However, Unlike the original script where she dies then and there, in a last, desperate bid to save her sister, Vale touches Alir with Alir's Dragonstone, which I will remind you that she had the entire game, and then it happens. Alir transforms into an evil-looking serpentine dragon just like her father. Her friends could have the same horrified reactions they had when she was turned into a corrupted, and Alir could still feel all the insecurities she felt at the end of chapter 20. With Gris's accusation confirmed, she would absolutely hate herself and think herself a fraud, and unlike the original end of chapter 20, her friends would not be immediately supportive due to her horrific appearance. However, one person would still try to get through to her. Emblem rings don't really do much in the story of Engage, despite their ensemble consisting of some of the most iconic characters in the series, and Leaf, they're mostly MacGuffins for the story and their supports only have about three lines each for each one. So if you went into Engage without knowing anything about Marth, for example, you'd pretty much only get the bare minimum information that he's a nice guy. However, in the story, Alir and Marth are presented as best friends and sworn allies, but despite this, the game never sheds much light on Marth himself, despite being the most important emblem in the story and the one Alir wants to get back the most. So I would have Marth be the one to snap Alir back to reality. For those of you who never played Shadow Dragon, Marth was once in a similar position to Alir. 
He felt himself to be a craven and a failure, and he was. Despite being the descendant of Anri, he couldn't stop his kingdom from being destroyed, his people from being enslaved, and his own mother from being slain. He fled, and was a fraud just like Alir. But Marth was not satisfied with this. He went on to recruit allies wherever he could, even from unlikely places. He would storm the country that betrayed his people, he would retake his homeland, and he would destroy Medius and become the legendary hero king. So, in my new version of this scene, Marth would tell Alir that he too was once a fraud, but through his later actions, he was able to keep those he loved safe. Then, chapter 22 would play out as it normally would, but you would have Marth at the start, and Alir would be powered up with their new fell dragon form. From a gameplay standpoint, just think of it as a late game boost, like how Roy significantly powers up once he gets the Binding Blade. Then, after rescuing all of the emblem rings like you normally would, her friends would see that despite looking like a fell dragon, that she's still the same Alir that they know and love, and she used all of her originally seen as evil draconic powers to protect them. I would also move Tamara's line from the end of chapter 20 to the end of this chapter to have it make more sense. She would still die at the end though, for this we can just say that the power of being a dragon only gave her the ability to survive her wounds for a little while longer, just enough to protect her friends. Then, the rest of the game would just play out as it normally does, with the emblem rings reviving Alir after all of this and her becoming an emblem. But Alir would have her dragonstone as a weapon from now on. So let's go over how many issues I think this fixes. 1. All of the melodrama with Alir being Sombron's kid isn't just resolved in one scene anymore. 2. It fits more with the theme of the game, with Alir using a form originally thought to be cursed and evil to live a way she wants to live, by defending her friends. 3. Her heritage actually matters within the time period the game takes place in. 4. An emblem ring is given more agency in the story, even if it is just Mar. 5. Alir is only resurrected once, making the scene far less stupid. 6. A character called, now follow me on this one, the Divine Dragon actually gets to be a dragon in the game and story. Look, I know that there were some pretty big stretches there, like if Alir doesn't die the first time she can't motivate Vale to stop being mind controlled, and Marth not being disabled at the start like the other emblems at the start of chapter 22, but you could just use the Mewtwo Strikes Back excuse and say that due to their close bonds and friendship, oh, Marth came back, isn't that dandy? And, you know, in Endgame, Alir does that anyway. Like, the emblems aren't supposed to be summonable in that time space rift, but Alir just says, nope, they're my friends, they're here now, deal with it. So, you know, just do that for Marth, I guess. And as for Vale, you can just say Alir's violent transformation broke the helmet fully. Look, stranger things have happened in this game, okay? That armor of yours, may I have a lick? This conversation is over. But in the end, I think that just a few tweaks to only three chapters in the game would vastly improve its story and themes. Sadly though, that's not the world we live in, so Alir not transforming into a dragon will always remain Fireball and Gage's biggest missed opportunity. In my opinion, anyway. But what do you think? Comment down below what you think Engage could have done better, or just what you like about it. Also, like, comment, and subscribe since this is the end of a YouTube video and I am almost at 5,000 subscribers, hey, hey! But most importantly, remember to have a nice day. Bye bye